Thank you all for coming here Saturday. Uh, I'm going to talk about mining social media data about rare diseases. Uh, social media is a powerful tool for people with rare diseases because they can find uh, people uh, like them and it uh, avoids uh, isolation because finding people like them helps them to, to have uh, things in common with other people. And well, uh, I, uh, I'm an engineer, a telecommunication engineer. I did a PhD in computer science about case-based reasoning system of people with disabilities of neurological people. I had a collaboration with Institute Goodman and my PhD is a little bit special because I did it in industry uh, while working in Eurecat, the technological center of Catalonia. And I think since the 2012, the Catalan government uh, promote has a program, a P, uh, industrial program about PhD, but I started in 2009, so I started some years before. And since two years ago, uh, I teach part time in the Open University of Catalonia in the new uh, data science master and also in the computer, si computer science degree. So, first of all, thank all the sponsors. Uh, to be able to have this, to support this event. Um, for me, it's very special to be here in a, such interesting topic as rare diseases. I think rare diseases, uh, we should raise awareness of people with rare diseases. And for me, it's also very special to be here at CCCB because I came here when I was a teenager and as an adult to see the exhibitions. So for me, it's magic to, to be here. I, most of my prof professional uh, career, uh, I studied and worked here in Barcelona, but I also, I also had two international experiences. Uh, I did a short stay at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland. It was very interesting professionally because there I could work with databases and web applications. Uh, I participate also in the organization of the CERN School of Computing that that year was in Dubrovnik in in Croatia and from a personal point of view it was also very exciting because I had the incredible opportunity to live with 30 people uh, all over the world uh, from different nationalities in a very special place that it's a nuclear bunker from the Swiss army and here you can see a photos of the bunker uh, this, is the, this is the entrance the, the orange door bunkers have no windows and then when you enter, the first room you arrive is a disinfectation room. In the middle you can see the, the picture and there are some showers. So if there is some infection, you can uh, disinfection yourself. You can see how thick is the door. The, do the doors were, were huge. And I also had the, the chance to meet uh, international people from over the world uh, that I maintain relationships. And uh, it's very nice to know people from other cultures. And the second experience I had uh, was in the Google Summer of Code program. I don't know if you know this program. Uh, it's a global program where Google funds um, open source initiatives uh, in order to uh, be coding for uh, four months in summer. And uh, in my case, the organization was Moodle, that it's an NLM platform. Uh, perhaps some of you have used it at university or at secondary school. It was founded by, uh, by a, um, um, a man from Australia. And well, uh, for personal reasons, I, that summer I spent, you can work, you can remo re uh, work remotely wherever you want. And in my case, I went to Amsterdam uh, in the Netherlands. And there I had uh, the chance to visit a little bit the Netherlands. And I recommend you to go in spring to see the tulip fields and while riding a bicycle. It's very nice, and, and well, I also, uh, it's interesting to uh, know uh, Dutch culture. So, uh, now that I've told you a little bit my background, I would like to ask uh, what is a little, do a little survey about what is your background. Uh, can you please raise your hand, those of you who are work, have technical roles or work coding or as an engineers, can you please raise your hand? Okay, I see most of you. 
Uh, is there anyone in the room uh, working in the medical domain or is a, a doctor? Nobody. <laughs> okay, so you are most techies, I see. Okay, this talk is a mixture uh, of computer science and, and health and the medical domain. In fact, I work, I've been working for eight years and a half in the medical domain, in the e-health group in Eurecat. And my talk analyzes uh, two types of data, uh, Facebook data, Twitter data, and I'm going to talk a little bit as well about uh, interoperability, how to solve the interoperability problem, because uh, in health, interoperability is really a big problem and a big issue. So this uh, work, I, I have not done it alone. I have done it with six people, five from the Open University of Catalonia, and one from the University of Almeria, one teacher from the University of Almeria, and we have published this work, part of this work, in a scientific conference and that took place in Thessaloniki, Greece. So what are rare diseases? Uh, a disease in Europe is called rare when, in a, when it affects uh, less than five uh, cases out of 10,000 inhabitants. You can think that uh, rare diseases don't have, an in, in, don't have a much a strong impact in society, but it's not true, because if you aggregate all rare diseases, According to the World Health Organization, it affects uh, over 7% of the world population. So they have a high impact in society. The, uh, the Rare Diseases Day, that it's a day to raise awareness about rare diseases, is the last day of February. Because it's a rare day. Uh, sometimes it's 28th of February, and sometimes it's 20, 29 in February uh, in leap years. So uh, that is the, it was uh, last week. It was the International Day of Rare Diseases. So uh, rare diseases uh, affect, a lot, um, affect a lot of children because they have uh, genetics is very important for rare diseases. Uh, they have to, uh, families affected by rare diseases have to face several problems because uh, sometimes they are forgotten uh, by governments and also by the healthcare system. So I think it's very important to help those families. And I'm going to put a short video about uh, the video that was made for the International Rare Disease Day 2017 that explains a little bit how people, f how people with uh, rare diseases feel and uh, also how families uh, that suffer uh, this disease feel. Imagine if every time you search for an answer, you don't find it. How would you feel? Confused? Frustrated? Isolated. Millions of people across the world feel like this every day because they live with a rare disease. It's difficult to tackle a rare disease. You try different strategies to help the patients, but most of the time you don't have the data you need to make informed decisions. I really wish I had some answers. With your support of ongoing research efforts, today things can change. We can find more answers for Ocean, for Matthew and his family, for Jeffrey. With research, possibilities are limitless. Be part of the change. So uh, what we wanted to analyze 
and we wanted to help people is um, there is the Spanish Federation of Rare Diseases called FEDER, and we wanted to analyze social networks and see what people were interested about, uh, what, what topics people were interested about, and uh, check if uh, these topics were aligned uh, with the priorities that the Spanish Federation of Rare Diseases have. And the second objective of our study was to recommend uh, people interested in rare diseases about what type of content and when uh, they should post this type of content in order to have more engagement in their posts, in order to have more likes. So, uh, FEDER establishes this decalogue of priorities and we also st uh, study posts of groups related with rare diseases and we made this comparative study to um, suggest actions to the Spanish Federation of Rare Diseases. Uh, we follow this methodology. We use NetBit to, to extract public, health, public Facebook data and we use, uh, well, we translate it to English and you use, we use a library um, coded in Python uh, where we did sentiment analysis. In sentiment analysis, we study both the polarity and the subjectivity of, uh, mess of, of posts. The polarity is, is, a, is a, if a post is negative, neutral, or positive. And the subjectivity, uh, it's also a value, uh, value between minus one and one, and says if uh, the message is subjective or objective. Uh, and then we did some scripts in R in order to analyze uh, the messages. These are the results we obtained. We found that uh, we display them in word clouds. Uh, the, bold, the bolder the words and the bigger is that they appear more frequently. And in, in feather content, we could find some words like disease, attention, services, uh, ser um, information, uh, education, and in Facebook posts, we divide them in, in three groups. Well, one group with, that have low engagement, they have fewer likes, or another one with medium engagement, and the third one with high engagement. In low engagement, we found some spam, spam messages. For example, we have this girl called Nicole that sends uh, information about asking for a credit, asking for money. These uh, messages, uh, obviously, they have low engagement because they are spam. And we also found the words that were related with medium engagement had to deal with, deal, dealt with uh, treatment, death, and authorities. And the ones that had more engagement were words like treatment, aortica, later, affectation, the Netherlands, <laughs> because curiously, there was a, a, a motivational video to uh, a psychological video to help people with rare diseases and was about the Netherlands. So we made a ranking. We used the log likelihood measure to see the differences uh, about the two contents. And we found that some words were very common in the priorities decalog, and others were uh, more common in social networks. And there were some words that uh, were common in both documents. So these were the conclusions. The conclusions were that uh, FEDER is more focused on diseases, attention, disability, services, or education that are environmental factors. And, face, and in Facebook, people talk more about people, life, family, help, or gratitude. And the topics that were common in both, uh, in both documents were says, experiences, promulgate, uh, social, or cause. Uh, regarding uh, what uh, posts generated more engagement, we analyzed the type of posts. Uh, there are six types of posts which are in Facebook, that, which are event, link, note, photo, status, and video. The type of content that generated, that generated more engagement were the photos. So here we can see the, the English saying that a picture worth a hundred, a thousand uh, words, because definitely photos are the type of content that uh, have more likes. Then status, changes in status, 
then video, event, link, and finally, note. We also did some temporal analysis in or, uh, with different temporal granularities, analyzing what was the time of the day where there were more posts and what time of the day had more engagement. In the upper left part of the slide, you can see that uh, the hours that have more engagement are uh, at midday and also late, late at night. Uh, and regarding the polarity of messages, the mean polarity of messages, we can see that the higher polarity, the most positive messages are very early in the morning or at midday. But uh, it's important to have in mind that not many people post at 5 or 6 p.m., 6 a.m. in the morning. So uh, here you can see. Here you can see that uh, very few people post in, at 5 or 6 a.m. in the morning. And we also studied the, the differences in the different days of the week. Most people, the day of the week uh, where, when people post more messages is, mon is mo on Mondays. And the, the day of the week that people post less messages is on Saturdays. And uh, in Sundays, if you see uh, people post more photos in, our, in the data set we use. So you can see that there are some differences uh, regarding the time of the day. Uh, then we analyze uh, Twitter information. We analyze data in the Rare Diseases Day 2017. Uh, we created a map where you could see uh, the different tweets. All these tweets were in Spanish language. So obviously, uh, there were more tweets in Spain and also Latin America, but also all over the world. Uh, we created it with GitHub, so it's a little bit related with the previous talk of Dulce. And uh, we created it with the open source tool Leaflet, that it's a tool where you could uh, uh, paint different uh, samples and pins in the map. So here, here you can see the map, and in, we have um, painted different clusters. Here you can see the number of samples of each cluster, and the warmer the color of the cluster, the more samples there are. And when you click a pin, you can see the different, the different information of the, of the tweet. And you can zoom in and navigate through all the through all the content. All right, here there are a lot of pins. So uh, to localize the tweet, we use the the geographical information in the tweet account because usually when you tweet, you don't put your geographical information, your GPS coordinates. So we did we use the the city you have in your account in order to to extract this information. We also did some structural analysis to see uh, what, what users uh, tweeted more. Uh, obvious, uh, Obviously, the, the user who tweeted more was the Spanish Federation of Rare Diseases and also a user called Raras y Reales. And we did also a, a relationship analysis about the tweet, uh, Twitter accounts. Uh, in the left part of the slide, you can see an entry graphic of the, of, of the data set, and in the right, you can see the exit graphic. And this was developed using the Jefi uh, tool. 
Regarding the content analysis of the Twitter data set, we can find words like Spanish, association, uh, hello, help. We can also find the name of some of the rare, of rare diseases like Moebius or Wolfram, Wolfram, and also some words like family or patient or friend. Another, uh, the third uh, item I would like to talk to you about is about the interoperability problem. Interoperability is a big problem uh, in health because uh, health is a critical domain with complex uh, hierarchies, hierarchies and complex relationships. So uh, ontology engineering gives the methodology to systematize and manage uh, these uh, heterogeneous representations. Ontologies uh, represent classes in a hierarchy and attributes and their relationships. And we developed this ontology using the open source tool Protege that was made in Stanford. And we stored the ontology in our, our very, uh, the most important biomedical reposit rep repository called Bioportal. So here you can see our ontology. We, and in, on the left, you can see the different the different classes of the ontology, the different concepts. We use concepts from the World Health Organization, especially uh, the three classification, the classification of diseases, the classification, the, the functioning classification, and also the treatment classification. And we also use concepts, um, some uh, genetic com concepts, because as, as I told you, genetics is very important in rare diseases. So big data is also very important in order to analyze all the genetic information. And this ontology is holistic because it models the person not only physically, but also psych uh, psychologically and socially. So, uh, and well, our, the, in, in the future work, we would like to do some clustering, some unsupervised learning, and also to find the most similar person uh, of, a, of a given person. And well, uh, as a conclusion of my talk, I would like to highlight the power of data science. They say uh, power is the, I, that data is the new bacon. Well, it's also said that data is the new oil, so companies want to have more and more data to exploit it. And because data is like bacon, it's hot. Everyone, everybody wants to have uh, more data in order to exploit it. When you see a service that is free, uh, okay, uh, it's free, but because they use your data. And it's also like bacon because it can be served in different, in different ways. So you should process data uh, in order to extract all the potential in order to, uh, so it's valuable and tells a history because, well, if data is garbage, it's like they say, no? Garbage in, garbage out. So you can process it a lot, but the, also the quality of the data is very important for the question you want to be, uh, that you want to be answered. And well, I, I, uh, in the health domain, I will also to highlight that we are all rare and we are all unique. So I think we should em embrace uh, diversity. And in the end, we all have like uh, functional diversity because uh, we function in different ways. So it's like in a tulip field that all the, the flowers are, are yellow. So if we have a red flower, we also have to embrace it. And not only functional diversity, but also uh, take advantage of this day to uh, um, promote gender diversity, gen gender diversity and also uh, uh, racial diversity. And well, the slogan of Rare Diseases Day 2018 is uh, show your rare, show your care. So in, in the end, we are all rare and we should uh, raise the awareness of people with rare diseases and I invite you to join us making the voice of rare diseases heard. So we should all paint our face like the girl in the picture in order to be, uh, to ha be conscious about this problem. And well, I also take advantage of this talk to um, 
present you a project about with stories. It's an initiative that was born in Madrid last year uh, about 23 women explaining uh, why we were motivated in uh, working in technology. In fact, two uh, of, of, of these women, uh, Marta Lobo and Nerea Luis, are talking in the afternoon. And I invite you to join this project, and you are more than welcome to explain us why uh, you were interested in technology and what motivated you to start working in technology. So thank you. Thank you very much, Laia. Um, anyone has any question for her? Yes. Hi. Um, it's not really a question, it's more of a comment. I would just like to really thank you for the work that you're doing. I cannot stress enough how important it is. I, I have a rare disease, a genetic one. I have thalassemia. And a lot of the information that we get is through the social network communities, actually. Um, a lot of people are misdiagnosed, they don't know where to go. Um, their doctors don't even give them the opportunity to get genetic testing. And the community really pushes for people to get their, their work their blood work done to be able to see where they are in the scale of like thalassemia to be able to get more treatment. And I think through the years, because of the, the actions of the community, they really pushed for more treatment. And actually now CRISPR has applied for the genetic trials here in the European Union, and we're all very excited for that. But it's really been um, during the last few years with Facebook that the community started to really come together and fight for our rights to be studied, to get treatment, and hopefully someday to find a cure. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that with us.